first started boxing just um, last year of school. A new gym opened in that area, and uh, the area that I lived in was a bit of a, a rough area. Uh, and me and a few friends we went down, check it out, and uh, and I just fell in love with boxing. I was always very competitive, always doing sports uh, of some kind or running around the streets. You know, um, we didn't have much money or anything, so we'd just make up silly games and follow the leader and, and play these strength games and stuff. And uh, and it just appealed to me, and I just I just loved it. Um, most of my friends dropped out and stopped stopped training with me, and I kept going myself. Um, and, and after I think it was about four or five months, I had my first amateur bout, and uh, and I stopped the guy in the first round, and that was it. You know, the buzz and uh, the feeling was just uh, unbelievable because I was a shy, I was really shy and I was really quiet. Um, so to do something like that is a big, you know, it's a big thing for me, and uh, and it started giving me the confidence and everything, uh, and then I just kept at it after that. Nobody really knew I was boxing for a few years uh, until it started coming to the papers and, and people started to get to know about me boxing and stuff. Um, but I think the first seven, eight fights I was unbeaten as an amateur uh, and then, then I lost one and, uh, and, and kept at it. I entered the ABAs because um, I wasn't getting very I wasn't get, getting many bouts around my area. There was only me and one or two other boxers that were boxing for the club. It was a new club and uh, we didn't really travel anywhere or go anywhere. So um, I went straight into the ABAs. That's where you guaranteed fights because I kept going and getting cancellations. People started hearing about me and wouldn't, wouldn't box me because I, um, I was stopping most of them, you know. Um, and not many amateurs do get stopped easily. Um, after that, I entered the ABAs. I think I got to the quarterfinals the first time. Um, and uh, lost the decision. Had a few years off. I think I, I think um, I started working. Got uh, went to Pakistan uh, for a couple of years. Uh, came back in into boxing after that. And I, I was always doing a bit of training and messing about. I had a little punch bag. I took with me to Pakistan and hung it up on the in in one of the rooms. Uh, and I was just messing about with it. There. I had a little skipping rope. When I came back, I started getting a bit more serious with it. Uh, and and I saw Prince Nassim come on the scene, I think it was around that time. And then I entered the ABAs again. And I won it that year, 1996. And that, that really gave me the confidence that I could actually do something. And, and, and that's, that's when I really started thinking about turning professional. Before that, it was just something I loved, just a bit of a hobby. Never really took it serious. And I started training better. I started thinking about the future and thinking, yeah, you know, maybe I could do something. There's uh, Prince Nassim and Asia doing well. Maybe I could do something. And I saw a few of the fighters that were that were professionals that I'd boxed and, and beaten as amateurs. Uh, I went for the ABS again the next year. I got to the semi-finals, but we got there a bit late and I didn't make weight. Because I used to love my chocolate. I didn't, uh, I didn't really worry about my weight that much. And I was only a few ounces over. I think I took my underpants off and I was another couple of, it was, I think it was about four ounces, 400 grams or ounces or whatever it was. And then it burned down to two or something and they said, sorry, the scales are closed. So I was really gutted because I was really, really on fire that year. I was, I was, I was looking good, and I was, I was confident, you know, better than I've ever been. I thought I would have won it two, two years on the trot. And I, I box, I got caught up for England, boxed for England a few times. It was three, four times, um, but I was boxing guys that were way, way too experienced. You know, two, three hundred um, international fights, the German international and Dem from uh, somebody from Denmark. So I think I won, uh, won two and lost two. Uh, and then I decided uh, I'm going to take pro now or never. You know, I was 27 at the time. Went to the uh, Sheffield Brendan Ingle stable. Uh, that's where Prince Nassim was, and that's where everybody was. That was that was that was the top gym at the time, or the the main gym at the time around the area. Um, it was a bit of a distance from Nottingham, but I travelled up there once a week, once a fortnight. I uh, mean, another friend. A friend of mine turned professional at the same time, so we used to travel up together, so it was pretty, pretty good. And uh, yeah, I went up there, started training, but I think Chris Nassim was having problems with him at the time, so he was in the process of leaving in the next year or two. I got to see him a few times, met him, but didn't really actually train with him or anything. Um, so that was a bit, a bit sad, I would like to train with him. He, he did look very good in training. And uh, yeah, it was, I think I had um, about eight, nine fights with the, the Ingles. Um, but they were starting to get problems with Frank Warren. I was getting fights. I had my second, third, and fifth fight. I think I had it in one day's notice. 
against the Frank, Frank Warren's um, top boys like Takalu, Martin Holgate. Um, so I was getting, I, I felt like I was getting used uh, because I was ABA champion and I'd done uh, reasonably well as an amateur. Uh, they were using my name because I was a bit older. I wasn't promoted. Yeah, I wasn't. Um, they probably wouldn't expect me to do that much as a as a, as a pro. Uh, but the both the fights, the first two fights, I got Takalu, who became world champion in the future, and uh, Martin Holgate, unfortunately, who passed away. I think last year or um, through some illness I read in the uh, on, on Facebook or somewhere. Um, and they were both unbeaten. Um, I beat them both in the last round, losing the fight both times, and uh, and that really gave me confidence in one sense that you know I can do something if I'd prepared because I wasn't prepared for that fight. I just uh, went on the spur of it, just trying to get the the uh, recognition by jumping, you know, going on Sky Sports. You get paid a bit more and everything else. Uh, and then from there, I think people were a bit more wary about me. They, were, they weren't accepting fights with me. I, I showed short notice easily, but then I got the one in France. Uh, short notice again, four days against the French champion. My first day round, I wasn't prepared. The confidence wasn't there. Um, I went went over there and um, in the plane, I, I think I, I must have blus burst a blood vessel or something. My nose was bleeding, and that played on my mind. And and I just was not, I was not there mentally. And I think the first four rounds, I gave him away more or less. I was just too nervous. Uh, when I went there, I mean, he was like the Ricky Hatton here. He was, he had cameras everywhere. I was. And I was just like nobody on my own, just standing there, you know. And he had cameras here, there, everywhere, chasing him around and giving him all the build, build up. And I thought I've been screwed here, you know. I knew, I knew they'd try that, but I still, I still went in there and gave you a good fight after the first four rounds. I was coming on top, but unfortunately, you know, I was never going to get it. I was never going to get it in his own time. Um, but I've got no problems with it. I did lose the fight. I did. I didn't. Um, I didn't work hard enough. I was uh, the confidence wasn't there. But I would. I wanted to get a rematch in the future, but we didn't get it. I got I got the chance to box for the um, light light middleweight heavy title. Um, I was really a welterweight, but when the opportunities come along, you've got to take them because uh, any kind of title gives you that bit of exposure and gives you that bit of name, and people start talking about you. And I thought, um, yeah, I'll take the fight. Um, then it's very uh, there's people that know me in Nottingham, and they'll say, Dennis, bro, he's, he's he's crazy, he's this and he's that, you know, he's a bit he's a doorman, and everybody knows him and. And, uh, I did, and I checked him out a little bit and I saw that he's a tough guy, you know, and he's boxed a lot of the top guys and given them a good go. Um, but he's a bit of a wild swinger. And, uh, you know, if, if, if I box right, I should, I should be able to beat him, even if it's not my weight. And uh, the good thing is, I don't have to worry about my weight. Not that I had to worry about it, I was always pretty comfortable with my weight at that time. Um, I went, again, uh, you know, I was prepared really well. Uh, I went to his hometown. Uh, it was around that we took about 70, 80 people with us. So it was their crowd versus our crowd, and it was a, it was a brilliant night. You know, um, I still watch it occasionally, and and it was a tough fight. He was just he was like he was like a mini Tyson. He was just swinging like from from down the floor. He was swinging over with punches. He caught me with a few good shots, uh, dazed me a few times. But every time I hit him, you know, I'd hit, I'd hurt him. But he was just tough, and he kept kept coming. I think that's that's where the hand problem started. I was hitting him so much so much to his top of his head. And it started bruising up, and that's where the, it first started. I think in the, um, the, the sixth round, sixth round, I think I done about 21 unanswered punches combination on him, and and he took them all. And even then, he still won't go down. The referee jumped in. You know, he was that tough, and each one of them was knocking his head back and everything. And uh, it was just a brilliant finish. I remember that. It was a buzz. Uh, but after that, I realised that sooner or later I'm going to get beat if I carry on taking these risky fights with Dingles or if I keep getting uh, messed about like that. I could see that they were having problems with Frank Warren. They weren't getting the fight, same fights before as before. They were having to give their a, a, a fighters as opponents to the promoters. Uh, that's how it kind of works in boxing, as you probably know. Um, there's about politics involved. So I thought my contract's almost over. Uh, I better decide, have a look around and see if anybody else can do something for me. And so we had a word with um, a few people, met um, Jason Shinfu, one of the trainers uh, who lives not very far from us in uh, Alpherton, and uh, he worked with Tommy Gilmore and uh, um, Barry Hearn. Uh, and then they said, yeah, if you have a couple of fights, we could probably get you a Commonwealth title or something else and then uh, and see how it goes. So I decided to turn, uh, sign up with them and 
uh, I'd won fight with them, which I won in the first round. Just uh, I think it was just a bit of a journey. Money wasn't that was probably one of the easiest fights I had, <laughs> and uh, uh, won that straight away. Got me a chance uh, for the Commonwealth title, which again I, I, you know, 12, uh, I won it on points, twelve rounds. Uh, boxed pretty well there. Everything went to plan, uh, and then I was hoping to get something like a, a British title fight or, or something. I think Harry Dummy was the British champion at the time. There was a big bit of talk about him possibly fighting me. Uh, India and Pakistan, the rivalry and everything else would have been a good would have been a good fight. But uh, unfortunately, he got uh, he got beat on in his first defence. Uh, and then there was talk about Sinclair and other people that were going to fight me. But I think maybe I was a bit uh, I was a bit too risky with, with, with little reward. Uh, not that they were scared, but it's just all the politics again. You know, the, they all like to get the the, the biggest fights. Uh, Make and uh, the easiest fights in a sense, um, and then luckily the um, IBO title came available. I think um, was it Willie Wise fought somebody in Darren Bruce was it? He, he, he boxed him and they said, oh, you know, that you could get the winner. So I thought, yeah, we could. I'd, I'd, but if I go for that, then I can't go back backwards for the British title because that's what they, how it works. Um, they, unfortunately, Darren Bruce didn't win it. Willie Wise won it, and uh, he pulled that off a bit of an upset. So I got the chance for that, and uh, and that was it. You know, things just um, went really well from there. You know, we trained for that fight. Training went really well, um, and the, the fight was even better. You know, I was I boxed almost a plan. Uh, I hurt my hand a little bit, got caught, but uh, I, I outboxed him quite easily because everything was working uh, to a T. The jab worked brilliantly. The football was right, and, uh, and I think that's where I started to really get the confidence and actually started believing in myself, thinking you know. Yes, I can mix it with the world level guys, and I can, I can box against the top guys, um, and, um, and and I think after after that the loss that I did have, I, I worked on my defence, which was a bit of my weakness, you know, getting hit too easily, getting chin up with with the long neck and everything else, and uh, yeah, it's, it improved a, a big time, and and, and they, they they sort of put a few shows up for me in my hometown at the Harvey Allen Stadium, and got me a bit more uh, a bit more publicity around Nottingham. Got really good support around Nottingham. The guys in Nottingham uh, started coming out to see me, and we had, I think, it was five shows in Nottingham. So it was brilliant. You know, we had um, seven defenses in total. Um, I think each time I, there was a couple of couple of fights that weren't the most exciting because my hand kept getting hurt. Um, so I had to win the fight with just jab and movement. And sometimes people don't like that; they like exciting fights. Uh, and maybe that's why I didn't get the big fights after straight after this defending my title like seven times. And then there was a couple of good fights in there where I got a good knockout. The first defense against Belowski, and that was a very good knockout. And then the, the the one in South Africa, I went over to South Africa to defend against Jan Bergman. Uh, that was a tough fight again. Um, he was a very highly rated guy, very big puncher. Uh, I went over there and uh, his altitude, so I went over there like two and a half weeks before the fight to climatize. And had I not gone there, it would have it would have been really really difficult because the first week I was I was getting beaten up there and I couldn't I couldn't run. I one two rounds and I feel weak and just can't breathe. It's just hard to explain, you know. You just feel zapped of energy and and stuff. But after about ten days, I really felt stronger and you know I was two pounds lighter than I've ever ever been at that at that time in my in my career. Um, getting older, it was that was you know really really good. Showed how much how well I prepared for it and and. and the food was really nice every day, you know, really fresh. So everything just helped, and it was just brilliant. And, uh, and the fight, was tough, um, but you know, he, I think I was down twice. He was down three times, and each time I was down, it was just like flash knockdowns. Got hit clean, but um, because I was in such good shape, I think I recovered very quickly, and uh, and, uh, and I'm getting straight back. Uh, and again, once I won that, there was promises of Vernon Forrest, there was um, Chad Dawson, I think it was, or Chad Summer uh, in Australia. Um, they all fell through. I think Vernon got a better offer with my ogre, and he lost that again, or he lost it twice. I think that was the first time. So I never got the big fights, and then they talked about Mosley, talked about a few other names, uh, but it was just I think Sky Sports at the time were pulling away from boxing. Uh, without the big TV companies, it's hard to, uh, or somebody backing it, it's hard to get the big names to come over to you, or you to go over there. So uh, you're never going to get noticed as much. And if you're just a, a good boxer who's dangerous. They don't want to take you for, for 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 pennies, you know. They want good money if they want to take a risk against you, uh, and that was always the problem. So uh, I waited around, I waited around for about a year and a half with no fights, two or three cancellations, and if you're not fighting, you're not earning. And 
because I was getting older. I needed to, to decide what I was going to do, um, whether it was a carry on boxing or carry on working or what. You know, if, you, if, you, if you're not training regularly and all of a sudden you get a fight, that can be bad for you as well. And then they kept asking me to have combat fights, um, six rounders, four rounders, but with the hand problems, I didn't want to risk it for, for a little fight. You know, I wasn't bothered about who I boxed as long as I guaranteed some sort of um, big fight after that. And, and they weren't really promising me anything. Uh, there was a few new promoters coming on the scene. They were saying the same thing. If you can sell tickets, you know, we can try to get your fights on, but there's no guarantees at the moment. Nestrenko, um, he came in uh, a little bit short notice, he was prepared for another fight and uh, we took him a little bit lightly I think. Um, I think he got a couple of weeks notice or something for the fight because I got a cancellation and he was, uh, he was supposed to be fighting so he was still in, in good, he was in shape. I think he'd had 44 or something fights, 43 fights and won, lost one or two or two of them I think he lost. He'd been ex-European champion, he'd boxed the European title before and I didn't really find much footage on him and I just, I didn't check him out properly. And he was really tough, you know, I, I, I was hitting him all night long, hitting with everything and, uh, and, and almost burnt myself out. And he was still coming up, man. Every time he hit me, it just, it just dazed me, it hit me, you know, I could feel it shoot, shook, shook, shook me all this with my body in a sense. And uh, um, in the 10th round, I missed a point and he caught me with a shot and put me down, on, I went down on one knee and I got concussed. I couldn't, I couldn't remember that at the time. And, and it was a scary time really afterwards when I thought about it. And in there, I don't know how I managed to move around and get away from that round. And the 11th round, I was still, you could see on the, on, in the tape, uh, on, the, on the tape that um, I was still a bit buzzed from it. Uh, but somehow I, man I managed to move around, fiddle him about, mess him about. He was tired obviously, because the last three rounds before that, I'd absolutely battered him. And he took everything. And somehow he didn't, he didn't go down and the referee didn't stop it, which he probably could have. Uh, and then the last round started and within the first 30, 40 seconds, you know, I, I, I caught him with the right hand and slipped to his jab, right hand, and he lifted him off the ground and he fell down and uh, got up, but he was shaky and the start, referee stopped it. And uh, I think my dad was, my dad went to do pilgrimage at the time, prayer, and he was praying for me and all I can think is that then prayers were answered, you know, otherwise I don't know how I boxed, how, how I won that fight with the, the, with the condition I was sort of in, you know. Um, but that was probably one of my toughest fights, I think. But then there's another couple that you could you could name. There's so many that you could probably name in their own way, you know. Um, but I had a rematch with him a couple of day fights later, and uh, after the first one, you know, I was sensible. I just boxed him. I just kept kept it long, made it so much easier. Didn't let him get near me. Maybe not the most exciting, you know. But um, that fight was, I think it was the top two or third third fight of, of that year, so the knockout, sorry. Um, yeah, and in the uh, end of the year, the Christmas time when they're putting on, so. I think I got it three years running. Where I got second, third, and fourth, or something, or fifth. Yeah. So that was uh, that was nice. Yeah. Um, I, at the time, I was feeling I, I, I was feeling like I was in my prime. You know, I was really comfortable. I was starting to do things like the top pros do in America. I was standing in front of fighters, slipping, rolling, sliding, and and coming about with shots. Uh, my defense was so much better than it had been in the past. Um, I'd worked on a lot of things and I was comfortable with uh, standing in front of people. Um, that fight, again, he was a former world champion at light welterweight, but he was a good puncher. And, uh, and I almost stopped him. Again, his hand just stopped him again. Helped him, but he, he was put down. Yeah, I don't think he'd been down before that. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a high. I was expecting big fights, like I said earlier. Um, I was men different names were mentioned. And uh, and it and it'd been the same case, you know, two three years, telling me, yeah, this 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 name, this name, and it should happen, it should happen, and then they were telling me about Australia. I was preparing, getting ready, taking time off work, not uh, uh, and losing money to be told that there's no fight, and then they're saying, oh, this, you know, Sky Sports are pulling away. We're going to have to try to look for something else. Um, you're going to have to probably box a few more uh, eight rounders, six rounders, and and you don't get up for them when you've been fighting seven eight title fights and uh, you've been at the top of your game waiting for the big fights. You know, you get older, you want some sort of um, reward for the end. You know, everybody, as much as we love the game and we want to make a name for ourselves and, and it's about legacy, you know, uh, when you're a bit older, you want something to retire, you know, retire with and uh, uh, sort of have your faculties as well. Um, if you've got nothing in the bank afterwards, uh, you see so many boxers, you know, they, they have bad health and, and other problems uh, and they have nothing to show for what they've been doing. 
So, you know, I was kind of waiting around. I probably should have had a few more. Uh, I should have probably took a few fights just to keep busy and active. But I think I started losing, losing a bit of the love for the game. The hunger was going um, because I'd been messed about. I wasn't the same. Um, I was more, it was more about protecting my last couple of fights and getting the big paydays. Uh, and that was because I was getting messed about. Uh, so, yeah. And then, and then a couple of years after I retired, I, the thoughts of coming back and everything were there. I wanted to come back. The injuries would kept, kept making me a uh, second thing, think about it, sort of, you know. And, uh, and I was thinking, no, maybe not, maybe it's not a good idea. Maybe, maybe I was uh, right to do it at the right time and let's not be stupid like the rest of them. You know, money's not everything. Your health is your wealth, as they say. And, uh, and I think I've done the right thing, you know. Um, so, yeah, um, I'm reasonably happy, I think. Uh, and, you know, um, uh, yeah, I decided just to retire um, uh, and, and carry on, start a sort of training or, or kids or something, or do something, something like that, stay in boxing. Yeah. And it worked out quite well, so, you know, very quickly I got uh, counsel uh, asking me for classes with troubled areas, um, different youth centres, schools, and it was going really well, uh, really, really well. And, uh, and then I, th I always thought I'd love to have my own gym, my own little place. And we were very lucky that I found a place, uh, the first gym that was in Carlton. And uh, we started the gym then, it went really well. So uh, we stopped all the classes. But then after a couple of years, we, had, we ended up moving because the building wasn't very safe. Went to another, build, uh, build, uh, another venue, which was a temporary venue. We were there for about 18 months. Uh, we had to leave that place again because um, it wasn't really suitable for a gym. Then we found this place and uh, we're here now. Hopefully we're here for a few years. and. And you should be hearing about us now. We're having our first show on the 21st of May. Uh, we've got a lot of kids that come here from this, this area. It's a bit of a rough area. Uh, a lot of the kids haven't got much to do. So it's a, it's a brilliant place for, for a gym. And hopefully we can get the, the kids coming here regularly and we can sort of find, find our champion in the future. Um, but that's, that's what it is now. You know, I'm just uh, happy, happy to be involved in something I love and, uh, and, and can pass on my knowledge and, and experience to some of the young kids. I got a letter, I got a letter, um, 2003 or two, I think it was. And I got a letter saying that they're calling you to meet the Queen um, or the House of Parliament. You've been, you've been nominated or something. Or, or, and I thought, what the hell is this? And then I, they rang my manager, uh, rang somebody else, and they said, yeah, we put your name forward because you, cause you um, represented uh, Great Britain in South Africa. Uh, you've done a lot of community work and charity work, and, um, and, uh, and, and it looks like you've got it. You know, he goes, I've been trying to get it for years and I've not got it, you know. Uh, and uh, I, went, I, went, I went there to the palace and uh, we got escorted in. We were like, it, was, it was a special day, you know, we got escorted into the palace. People were outside, the gates closed and we went in there. And it was a lovely, lovely day, you know, something to remember. And we went in there and, I, and, and a lot of times they say somebody else normally does it. And that day the Queen was doing it. So it was uh, another special thing for us. Um, you know, um, she, asked, she just asked us a couple of questions about when you're boxing again and uh, um, how, when did I win the title and stuff? So was, you know, I wasn't expecting that. Uh, so that's another beautiful memory. Although I won't mind a comeback, I won't mind a big five. I got one still. Really? Still? <laughs> still, uh, my weight's not too high. So if anybody's watching out there, the offers are available. You know, I'm ready for any offers. <laughs>